Hey guys, welcome to Blade Generated. Welcome to another video. And today, guys, it's been confirmed, or it's about to be confirmed very soon. But everything is done; like everything has been agreed. And Luis Suarez is going to be leaving Barcelona for Atlético Madrid after six wonderful years with the club. Anyone that n really knows me, like people that know me from way before, know that for me Suarez is like, you know, Messi for me is my favorite player of all time and for me the best player of all time. But I have an attachment to Luis Suarez that he's my favorite striker of all time. I love his attitude. He's the profile player that I always... That if I could be any player in the world, I would like to be Luis Suarez. I know, high ceiling, right? And anyone that, you know, I mean, if you take away that this is football, people might think that I'm, you know, talking about, like, I'm talking about Suarez's funeral instead of his, instead of him leaving Barcelona. But I wanted to remember all the great moments that Suarez had with Barcelona. Arriving after the World Cup in 2014, where Uruguay get knocked out by by the Colombia James Rodriguez, and you know Suarez was banned for a couple months and couldn't begin the season normally. We came after a difficult season that with the previous year before Real Madrid won La Decima, they won the Copa del Rey with that Bell exhibition. Atlético Madrid won La Liga in the last game of the season it was not the best year for Barcelona overall and in came Luis Enrique that year we had a difficult start to the season things were not working very well at the beginning when Suarez could play his first game was against Real Madrid where we lost 3-1 and it took a while until we could settle with Suarez, Messi and Neymar until Luis Enrique could find the key on how to position all of them into the pitch. But he managed to do it. After the incident at Real Sociedad, Luis Enrique was able to motivate those players and things started working. Suarez became our number, our number nine and things started working fantastically. Second half of the seasons, he scores an overhead kick from across from Adriano, a uh, really good like dribbling, pressing, like being aggressive, being alive in the pitch, something that that's that's what I want out of every Barcelona player to be more like Luis Suarez, more like Pedro, more like Samuel Eto, you know, things like that. And in the Champions League, he had a Champions League campaign that was phenomenal. Like he came and scored and scored against Manchester City against PSG. For me, the most iconic goal in his Barcelona career, maybe not the most important, but definitely for, for me at least the most iconic, is when he not makes David Luiz for the second time and scores and curls it right into the top right hand corner of the PSG net. And then two assists in the second leg against Bayern, two assists to Neymar, and then scored the last goal in the Champions League final against Juventus wrapping up a fantastic campaign. The season following that, still fantastic. Suarez scoring 40 goals. I believe in his last three games he scored something like 12 goals, which was absolutely ridiculous. He is one of the best strikers of all time, for sure. For me, he's Barcelona's ever greatest striker. He's 197 goals for Barcelona. It is absolutely remarkable. He is... One of the best, Eto as well, but for me Suarez, you know, arriving with 20, what was it, 27, and leaving with, 30, with 33. If we could have had Suarez in his prime years, at, with all of his prime years at Barcelona, he could have made more history, he, he could have scored more goals. And not everything was peachy with Barcelona, because then we had the 20, the 2016-17 season, which was still really good for Suarez. But the, team, the level of the team started dropping down. There were problems with Luis Enrique that came about. The players, you know, didn't want to work as hard. And Suarez was one of those players. 
I would always be the one to say, and this is at least how I see it, that bringing Neymar to Barcelona was the biggest mistake because he got the, he got, he has the he came in with Barcelona with the wrong mentality, and this is normally what happens. I don't want to be I don't want to be anyone like I'm raised or anything, but we can agree that in history the players that tend to be the most you can say divas in world football are the Brazilian players, especially like the top end Brazilian players. You could you, we only have to see the examples just at Barcelona. Rivaldo does well for a few years and then we start having problems. Romario does a fantastic season and then having problems with Barcelona. Ronaldinho has two really good seasons of prime Ronaldinho and then we start having problems. Neymar, we had what? Three seasons or like two like we like we had some good seasons of Neymar, very good seasons, but then problems with Neymar. Like it always seems like there there is something and that's why I am sometimes against, you know, this thing of giving players too much credit because it goes to their head. And but that's no, nowhere here or there. I'm just saying that we could have maybe got him out of Suarez. And he had a fantastic 17 18 season with, with the first season on, of Ernesto Valverde. I'm always going to say that that season, apart from the Roma thing, because the Roma thing was an incident fully on the players. Valverde, Valverde can't do anything, man. If you cannot defend a 4 1 lead against Roma, then I'm sorry. But, you know. And then there was a drop off in the 19 20 season and the 18 19 season. We had problems with those two seasons. Suarez physically wasn't on par, he was still good, he's always good, and I think that Suarez at Atletico Madrid, like, he's gonna be a fantastic player because now they're all gonna be playing for him, and if you wanna know what I mean by that, I mean, look at the 18-19 season, and look at Suarez against Real Madrid, where we beat them 5-1, Messi's not in the pitch, and everyone is running for Luis Suarez, and there, therefore, Suarez can afford to, you know, just do his role and finish everything. In the final third, be one of the most inf impactful players and I think that with this signing and if Real Madrid you know don't have the fortune of what happened last season and Barcelona cannot get their best level then Atletico Madrid are challengers for La Liga like Suarez makes that big of a difference because for me Suarez still has at least two years of top end football the problem with having Suarez at Barcelona at this particular moment is that for me there were only two options either he accepts to have a more kind of bench role starting from the bench or you know just dropping a bunch of minutes which is something that he didn't want to do or he had to leave because you know we cannot play the problem with having Suarez, Messi, Busquets, Piquet, Alba is that you start playing with a bunch of players that individually they're still really good but the level of intensity the level of commitment the level of just physicality it's not there like their mentality is not there and there's a difference but you surround them with a bunch of players that are hungry for titles that are gonna be running and having that one player that you know maybe it's not as alive but his level is gonna bring a lot of experience and that's something that I think is going to be very beneficial for Luis Suarez. There was a lot of criticism towards Suarez this season. I think some unfair criticism at some point. Like The criticism was fair of Suarez. But my problem is that the criticism was to Suarez. But what about Griezmann? Griezmann had an infinitely worse season than Suarez. And yet I don't see the criticism towards Griezmann. Like I understand that this was Griezmann's first season. But at least. The least that I expect Griezmann to do is to move. That if you have a chance on a one-on-one -on -one to dribble, that you attempt to dribble. That if you have a chance to take a shot outside the area because you've been able to do it for a long time, that you do it. That, like, yes, I agree that Griezmann kind of helped back to track back, but we didn't pay 120 million euros. So our winger or slash forward slash whatever Griezmann is, came back and defend like that's not what we paid money for Griezmann therefore I I need to see more Griezmann it's not that it's Griezmann's fault but the criticism between this, the one that Suarez received and Griezmann received is 
night and day, and yet Suarez had the infinitely better season. Like, this season the blame went to Firpo, Busquets, and Luis Suarez. And Sergio Roberto, something that I still don't understand. Like, if you see Busquets with Spain, and this is where I, I encourage you all to see it, I'm going to continue seeing Spain. I'm very curious to see Spain because I want to see if we can get the best Busquets back. Because for me, we can still have a really good Busquets if we can surround the whole team and protect Busquets so Busquets has can do his role more effectively. So, you know, like we need to start, you know, stop finding people to blame for the team not succeeding. Like, because sometimes we blame the wrong people and we blame them unjustly. Like, Suarez gets called fat, Busquets gets, like, you know, like he's finished, Sergio Berta gets called that he's useless when he really isn't. For me, I'm gonna be honest. Sergio Roberto, for me, if you say that he was gonna be our right back since 20, like, when he started playing right back and you told me he's gonna be our right back and we're gonna trust in him and we're gonna play well, if Barcelona were playing well with Sergio Roberto as the right back, he would be one of the best right backs in the world. No joke. I know that a lot of people, that right now, what I'm saying is very easy to laugh at, but this is no joke. There is a reason that Guardiola, for two straight transfer windows, there's been inquiries about Sergio Roberto. And it's not to play in midfield, it's to play at right back. So, this criticism of Sergio Roberto that he doesn't work at right back is very unfair to me. Now, going back to Suarez, like I said, I think that Suarez didn't silence a lot of people. He left... We left the club today, the club training session in tears. You could see in the pictures. And all I want to say is thank you, Suarez. Gracias, Lucho, por todos estos años. Thank you for all these years, for all these, the wonderful goals, the assist, everything. Just he came in and he came in from having the best season of his career in 2013-14. A season where he was the one that deserved the Ballon d'Or, not Cristiano Ronaldo, Luis Suarez. Not even Messi deserved that Ballon d'Or, I know that. The only player since 2008 or 9, when Messi won his first Ballon d'Or, that deserved to take away a Ballon d'Or from Lionel Messi, deservedly so, rightly so, is Luis Suarez in that season. Every other year up to now, it should be Lionel Messi with Ballon d'Ors. And yet we know, we see what's been happening. But that season Suarez was spectacular. That that year Suarez was on a messy level. Like he was scoring a fantastic amount of goals. He was giving assists. He was pressing. He was creating. He was dribbling. Like Suarez was one of the best players in the world. And you can ask Premier League fans which are going to tell you good memories of Luis Suarez. Like they're not going to be biased. They're not going to be like, oh yeah. Like, even people that are not from Liverpool fans are going to tell you, Luis Suarez is probably, arguably, had the best ever, one of the best ever's Premier League season in his in, in the world. Like, it's probably up there with one of the best seasons that Thierry Henry has ever had in the Premier League. And we all know how Thierry Henry is loved in the Premier League. So, yeah, that's all I have to say about Luis Suarez. I could be, actually, no, I could be, here talking about Suarez for a longer time. I'm gonna finish maybe with a little story about Suarez if you guys want to listen. If not, you can end the video here. But that summer, I've been watching football for a long time since probably I want to say since Guardiola came in actually probably before I had watched a bit of Ronaldinho here or there. But I have been you know watching Barcelona sporadically since 2008. But I was never truly watching. You know, Barcelona here or there because I was very young. I watched a game here or there, watch maybe the Clasicos, maybe the Champions League finals that Barcelona played those those times around. And I, re I remember them in the TV. But when I started truly watching football and following football was that 2014-15 season and especially that World Cup. Since the World Cup 2014, I've been watching pretty much every game of football. Like... And what I mean, I mean every Barcelona game and like other games here or there. 
And that coincidentally was a season that captivated me because, you know, I see a, a really fun World Cup. I see my Argentina, well, my Argentina, I'm Venezuelan, but I always follow Argentina. I see my Argentina go to the World Cup final. And then I see Barcelona win the treble in the way that they did it. And I was captivated by Luis Suarez. I... Suarez got me, like, Messi for me has always been the best player, but I don't know. The spirit that Suarez displayed was like, he captivated, he was like, yes, this is football. Like, this level of emotion, this is football. Anyways, guys, that's a short story. Um, there's more stories, but, and I'll probably tell them over the time. Anyways, guys, thank you for listening. Thank you, Luis Suarez, for all the great memories. Visca el Barça. Visca Luis Suarez. Have really good luck at Atletico Madrid. Except that when you play against Barcelona. And I have no doubt that you will always be remembered as one of the best, greatest ever Barcelona players. With that done, guys, leave me all your opinions in the comment section below. Comment, like, subscribe. And I'll see you next one, Blaugranas.